and we're on air. Okay. Uh -huh. So, how are you guys? I'm Making good. it for the week. Yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? You know, well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, y'all excited for tonight? All these questions that we're gonna get to answer. Oh my gosh, for sure. Okay. Um All right, so we're just gonna give it a few minutes for everyone to join in. Um and then we'll go ahead and get started. Elevator music. <laughs> Okay. So weird. <laughs> oh gosh. I like listen to it while I'm driving. <laughs> Just like randomness. All right. Um, so everyone, so everyone that just joined, um, we're go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and start in just a few minutes. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna just go ahead and start with a few icebreakers, um, just to allow people to move in. Um, so, let's see. So, um, if you have any questions for us off the bat that you really, really want us to answer, you can go ahead and start sending them in. Um, but we can start off with introductions. Um, I am Omar, and me, Anjali, and Julia serve on the attention team of the National Council. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. Where are you from, Julia? Hey guys, my name's Julia. Um, I am currently in Waco at Baylor, um, but I'm a military kid, so I've been all over the place. No, probably most of the places y'all are from. I'm super excited to be here. Um, how about you, Anjali? Hi everyone, my name is Anjali, and I'm a senior at Sunset High School in Portland, Oregon. It's super rainy here, so I'm a little about that but yeah it's also raining here it's been raining for the past week which is like kind of unfortunate Are you but in California? i am sunny in california That's so sad. <laughs> I imagine it's like super sunny you're always at the beach yeah um so uh, just to roll out the agenda for today, we're going to be talking about Student Summit, uh, Leadership Symposium coming up, club registration, our favorite, uh, recruitment, Slack channel, all the good stuff. Um, but with the summit coming around the corner in just a month, a little over a month, um, we are really excited. So we're just going to go ahead and share some of our favorite summit memories. Um, so for me personally, uh, last year was my first time at the summit. Last year was my first time at UNSF USA's annual summit. Um, and it was truly an amazing experience um, to be able to meet everyone. And I think my favorite memory of the event um, was definitely getting just to meet other students from all around the country um, and learn what they're all doing all across in their schools. Um, what about you, Julia? Um, my favorite was probably when we had the women's panel. Um, it was just really, really cool getting to see so many women up there um, and knowing all that they're doing, um, people as young as our age in high school, um, all the way to like in corporate, um, just knowing everything that they're um, involved with and all the things that they're changing. That was just super cool to see like all that like women power on the stage, I guess. Um, but just getting to meet everyone, all the different clubs, um, the different people on there, um, like from around the country that's uh, just as passionate as we are about UNICEF. That was really, really cool. Um, what was your favorite part, Anjali? Ooh, um, I would definitely say um, Advocacy Day because I'm personally super active and I think that around with the whole summit was empowering and I had guys if you've been to the summit what was your favorite part 
Um, or even if you haven't been to the summit, tell us what you're excited about. Um, we know on our website has a little bit of information of who's going to be there, what's going to be going on. So um, let us know. Um, we will look through the chat and um, share that with everyone. Um. Let's see. Um, so we're going to get started with the questions in just a minute. So if you guys want to go ahead and send chat in your questions, um, we have plenty of time to answer all of them. Um, and if you have a summit, summit member you want to share, um, or if you're going for the first time this year, let us know in the chat. Um, we'll talk about it. So we actually did go to a question from Holly Love. Um, so Holly Love said, what was the hardest part of the summit for you guys? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, this is a funny answer, but I would definitely have to say waking up early. <laughs> fun, I think, because I'm on Pacific Standard Time, waking up at five o'clock was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think I had that same situation too. Um, so flying from California, I think was the hardest part for me. Um, but at the end, it was all like so worth it. Um, but yeah, waking up early is a tax, but it's all worth it in the end. <laughs> Jet lag, dang. Um, honestly, the hardest part for me was probably um, having to go away. I had so much fun being there. I um, had a lot of fun. Uh, and participating with everything and then it was just kind of sad that you know had to leave everyone um, and especially because we met a lot of people so that was really really cool um but apart from that i would say yeah um it's like long days and we have so much going on we're just like going all day so that's super fun but waking up super early is like getting used to it again especially being in college where i'm like my earliest class is 11 and then having to wake up at five was <laughs> throwback to high school <laughs> Um, Being so yeah, that was interesting. Like you have so much to do and the buildings are all like the same and you feel small, but also like big, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I love that we did that in the summit, um, which is something to like look forward to having um, the huge groups where we were all together, like hundreds, hundreds of people involved with UNICEF getting to hear speakers, but then um, getting to break off into smaller groups and really get to know each other was super cool. Um, because like you got to see the impact when we were all together, but also got to see like um the personal things that people are doing to like make sure that UNICEF's goals are going out there and that we're working. Mm -hmm. Um, what's some stuff that your club's doing right now, Anjali? Um, my club is currently working on more advocacy related stuff. So we're working on speaking with our local representative and kind of getting her to talk about children's rights and what they mean to her, and doing an event in our school based stuff of all that. What about you? Um, well, since Valentine's Day is around, um, we looked back at like our past events and realized like having a, new, a fundraiser on Valentine's Day wasn't um, the best because every single club on our campus is doing it. So um, our officers actually asked our members what they wanted to do. And we are having a um, treat yourself fundraiser the day after Valentine's. So. Um, all those cheap candies that are out there, the chocolates, the flowers, um, we're actually going to be selling on the 15th. And so um, my officers are coming over to my house tomorrow, actually, and we're going to be making cake pops and um, cupcakes, a bunch of stuff to sell. And just I'm um, getting really excited, making sure people treat themselves the day after Valentine's. Yeah. Um, what about your, your club, Omar? My club. Um, so uh, Los Angeles is a little rainy right now, um, so not really too much outdoor fundraising. Um, but really, just I think right now focusing on like advocacy for the summit um, and making sure that we are making aware for students that the summit's going on and kind of how to get involved with that kind of work. Um, I think that's a perfect segue into a few minutes about the summit. Um, so we do have some questions. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions. Um, while we're talking, feel free to chat them in. Um, our first question about the summit is, uh, since the deadline for financial aid passed, what are some other ways that we could fundraise to pay for the summit? 
Oh, I have the perfect example for this. My club is actually in the process of doing it. Um, so we really wanted to take at least three of our um, members or officers. And um, we were told by a couple of businesses that we've worked with before that they would love to have profit shares with us. So in a profit share, you basically um, just get part of um, the money given to a restaurant for um, whatever people purchase. Um, different restaurants have different amounts, like some 10%, 15, 20, or um, the total of whatever sales they make that day, they'll give you a percentage. Um, so we set up one for every day, every week of um, February, and um, we've made a couple hundred off of it. So that's just going to go directly to um, people that have applied to go to the summit um, in our club. And that was like a really cool, easy way because y'all get to have time together as a club um, and then also invite people um, from campus. Like for us, we invited pe people from other departments to come support us. And that was a good way to recruit too. So um, pretty cool because they got to talk to our officers. They got to talk to um, our members and we also just got to spend time together in general. So that was really cool. Do y'all have any other tips or tricks? I would definitely say that maybe starting a GoFundMe is a route that I've seen people go down because it's an easy way to reach out to people that you know that probably care about you and want you to get more involved with UNICEF to help you out. Yeah, those are all great ideas. Um, so once we actually get to the summit, which is the most exciting part, um, what were some of your guys' favorite or most insightful workshops from the summit? Uh, so mine personally uh, was actually the water walk workshop. Um, and I think why that one was like so fun for me was because it really showed, like it was a great way for everyone to get, like have a fun interactive activity, um, but at the same time, really conceptualize the hardships that come uh, behind access to clean water around the world. Um, so that I think was the funnest workshop for me. What was yours, Julia? Um, I personally loved um, whenever we got together to learn how to talk to our representatives and senators. Um, so the day before advocacy day, I'm having the general session talking about um, what to plan when you're talking to um, a representative or a politician, um, knowing information about them and knowing that you as a constituent have um, like different resources to know what bills they're um, under, what they're passing, and then also just um, kind of knowing how to flow a conversation when you're meeting with either the politician or their staff. Um, so that was really, really cool getting to um, see like the planning stages and organization and then actually going out to do that. And that was probably my favorite because I came back to my club and showed that to them. And um, we were able to have workshops for how to write letters, how to call your senators and um, governors. And then um, we also have just had more advocacy in general now since um, I got to experience that. So really excited for some of my other officers to see that in person too. Um, what about you, Anjali? I also think that all the water related activities, at least for me, were super impactful because we got to explore every aspect of water related issues. So we got to check out the whole filtering thing. I don't know if you guys remember that. I probably can't explain it that well, but um, there were these like water bottles and you were able to filter out. I think it was maybe dirty water to clean water and it was science based. And then we got to draw things out and do more physical activities. So that's something that really sticks out to me. Do you guys remember the trivia? How intense we got with the trivia? There were some great <laughs> trivia questions. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely fun. <laughs> uh, another question. So Diana asks, are schools very strict with arranging trips outside of school? So how do other schools get approved to go to DC with the club? Um, and I think definitely dealing with administration um, is one of the conflicts that a lot of our clubs face. Uh, but I think it's navigating it like based on how your administration runs. Uh, so like with my club, um, it was more of like presenting what the summit was and what the purpose was and what we'd gain from the program to the administrators. Um, and from there, like getting their support for the summit. Um, even if that didn't mean financial support, it still um, like got us excused from classes um, and able to travel on behalf of the school. So that was one way we did it. Um, have any of you guys dealt with anything like that? Um, I, um, I think, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Anjali. <laughs> I mean, speaking on the more uh, high school end of things, I would definitely agree with everything Omar said. Another thing you could do is make sure your parents are in touch with administration because oftentimes they're more receptive to what parents have to say. What about you, Julia? 
Um, I was gonna say just really finding someone that uh, <laughs> you're, um, that like really supports your club, like an adult, a teacher, um, an advisor, a supervisor, just someone that um, really advocates for your club and then making sure that um, you kind of roll with it. Um, but I think uh, something that whether you're in high school or college that administration just in general really appreciates is um, mm -hmm. that you're organized, you know um, what's going on at the event, how much you need to get there, how many people are going, like all the logistics, having that worked out. Um, so at the end, they're really just figuring out what they need to do to support you can really make the difference between being allowed to go or not. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a really good place to start. Um, so do we yeah. have any other questions going on right now? These are really great questions, y'all. Yeah, um, so I think that's all for some questions. Uh, but if you guys have any, feel free to chime in. Um, so next, we're gonna go ahead and transition over to leadership transition, um, which definitely is one of the most central pillars um, of kind of transitioning your club. So I think first and foremost, um, the first question was, when should we start thinking about leadership transition for next year? So do you guys have any ideas? Um, we actually had a workshop during the summit about this that I really appreciated. Um, it's different for every club. Um, there are different standards depending on whether you're in high school and college, what it is for your area. Um, but something that we did talk about was just having um, a system in place already so that future um, officers can already have something to go with and like rock and roll with. Um, something that my club is doing that um, has really helped us, especially being a new club. Um, we, I was a founding member, so one thing that we made sure to implement was that there was always smooth transitions. So in the fall semester, we um, find officers for our associate positions. Um, and then in the spring semester, we find officers for our official chair positions. Um, and then during the spring semester, we do it early on. So like we've already got our officers picked out for the next year. And this gives them time to shadow um, the current officers in place so they don't just come in not knowing what's going on. They get to go to our officer meetings and really know what it takes to plan e an event, see our agendas, and also um, see like the events that we have throughout the semester. Um, so I think that was really, really important. And um, I know some clubs decide that only um, people that have been involved in the club before can become officers, which has its pros because um, they already know how the club runs, what events you guys do. Um, and then sometimes it's a little more difficult if you have a smaller club, so you need to have new people in it. But like I said, it can be totally different depending on um, where you're at um, and what your club looks like. So just kind of figuring out what works best for you and your school is really important. Do you have any other tips, Anjali? I think that's a question because what's part of your club and become a part of it, it's actually a huge part of your community and you want to make sure it stays in your community. So leaders are gonna graduate out, it's inevitable, and making sure that the future generation of leaders are equipped with the skills that you have or you've accumulated is really important. What about you, Amar? Yeah, um, I think I'd reiterate what both of you said, especially, uh, Juliet, when you're talking about starting early, I think that's one of the most important aspects of it, because um, I think it really allows for a seamless transition, because if you start, like, per se, in March, and you allow them to kind of take over the club for those last three months, um, it gives them, leeway to be able to like navigate what errors are going to run into um or what they need help with before you like depart the club officially um so i would say starting early is definitely like the key piece of advice i would give to any clubs um, that are starting their leadership transition and are there any other questions about leadership transition uh feel free to chat them in ah so we did get a question um, from Megan. What are some things our club can do over the summer break to make sure the next year starts out where we're left off? Um, so personally, when I had my high school club, um, what we did was we met once a month every summer um, and we kind of mapped out a calendar for the rest of the upcoming year. Um, just to make sure that we were on track for the year and had a clear image of what we wanted to achieve each month um, and kind of not like disappear off the grid for three months. Um, so that way we were able to start off to a good start. Um, that was what we did at my club. What about you, Julia? Um, 
Uh, Julia, if I don't think we can hear you. My bad, okay, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> um, so I was saying that um, it's kind of the same um, as you were saying, Omar, that for um, my club, it was really important to stay in touch during the summer. We couldn't just kind of cut off communication, um, but really just taking advantage of this break um, to plan everything out for the next semester, because that way um, you already have everything planned out and you really are just focusing on making sure you can uh, market and recruit and um, like have really good events. Um, so for us during May, um, we usually um, finish, it's usually our Austin transition time. So we finish um, transition and then come, um, let's say July and August, we're really just focusing on making sure all the events are planned out, that they're um, put into our administration so that they can be approved, making sure that any guest speakers that we have, we have them contacted and have dates set. And um, just big picture things like that. So um, once the semester is going on, you're really only working, worrying about details. Um, we were given the advice um, of like the three, three week period, if your event isn't totally planned out three weeks before the date that it's supposed to happen, um, like the big picture things, the location, the date, the time, um, the individuals, then um, it's gonna be a lot more difficult because then within the three weeks, you really just have to worry about small details. Um, so that's a big advice I would give. Um, what about you, Anjali? Any advice? I would definitely agree with both of you. Um, we also use it as a time to introduce new leaders to what UNICEF does and really explain the nuts and bolts of UNICEF to them because it's easier to empower other students when you know exactly what you're talking about. So I would definitely have to add that on. Yeah, these are all yeah. great questions. Um, we have another question. Uh, how do you make sure to keep all members involved in club activities? Um, I think that's something that you've got to kind of realize. Um, you can't make every single member get involved with everything, but um, that's the importance of having enough events and a varying uh, like agenda of events that there's an event for every single member that you have. Um, at least for us, we have um, we don't have like a hundred percent attendance requirement. Um, you just have to, as a member, um, attend a certain amount of events to meet a points requirement, but that really allows you as a member to um, go to general meetings if that's where you really find your niche because that's when we have our um, advocacy workshops or um, if you really like service and you want to go work with the um, partners that we have, um, you can really focus your niche there or um, if you really like working within the school system and you want to bring other departments in, um, I think it's just important to know that um, you have different members that have different interests. Um, at least for college, we all have different majors. So we want to make sure that we're always catering to um, the people that are worried about um, education issues within UNICEF or health um, or engineering. We have a lot of engineers. Um, so at the end of the day, you really have to know that your members are going to be all over the place, but have events that kind of cover all of that because that's what UNICEF does. We're a huge organization that covers a lot of issues. Um, do you guys have any other advice, Anjali or Omar? Um, I think uh, we covered it. Uh, One thing that I said is that we really talk to our members and see what they're interested in, make sure they're present in our decision-making processes, because I think it's important that they play a role in what our club does. What about you, Omar? Yeah, these are all really great ideas. I think uh, the biggest point of advice I would give is to create like a community within a UNICEF club because um, if everyone feels like they belong and everyone feels like they're contributing to really good work, uh, then they're going to want to get more and more involved. Um, and I would say just make sure that everyone, you're being as interactive um, as you can. So making sure that everyone is playing a role um, in meetings and events. So maybe when you're planning things like events, um, maybe creating committees or allowing people to play a bigger role um, in the hands-on work of the club. Um, and just, you know, showing your appreciation as often as you can, I think is a great way to keep everyone involved. Um, we do have another question uh, based off event planning. Uh, what's your favorite event to host slash do during the school year? Do you have any events that you really like to do, Anjali? I definitely would say movie nights because you can really involve everyone. Um, we had a Moana movie night last year and we got to invite students at our school and uh, teachers and their kids. And it was a fun little time where we could I'll watch a movie and talk about UNICEF afterwards. What about you, Omar? 
Uh, I would say my favorite event to host during the year, um, at least with my high school club, was definitely the water walk. Um, we used to host it like during lunch, um, and I think like all the students would get involved, um, and it turned into like somewhat of a rally. So I thought that was a really fun thing to kind of conceptualize water uh, to people that aren't necessarily familiar with the idea that children don't have access to clean water, um, and just have a fun time doing it. Um. I think for me, um, our fundraisers are really what our club focuses on. Um, we've turned our fundraisers where our members really get to be involved with it. Um, they um, really like the inspired gifts ideas that we have. So um, part of the donations that we do, we always have a specific um, inspired donation that goes to it. Right now, um, our club really has um, like a push to get as many vaccines as we can donated. So I'm um, after this semester, um, which we're about to actually put in our donation, um, we'll have 2,000 um, vaccines donated under our club name, which is really, really cool. Um, but also, we always pick a local organization to get involved with. And um, this year, we decided to get involved with Pack of Hope, which is here in Waco. And they donate food to um, different schools so that kids have food on the weekend because we're in um, Waco has a lot of food deserts. So um, knowing that we're ha helping specific kids really helped our um, members get really involved in fundraisers. We have a fundraiser almost every single month and um, they're really big events. They're all over campus. So um, I think that was, those are always super fun to plan because all our members are always super involved and uh, it's really great seeing how much they care about both our local community and like the effect that UNICEF can have overall. And um, so that's really, really cool. Very cool. Um, so our next question is, how can we get graduation cords at the end of the year? Uh, it's a great question, Shubi, and that's a great transition into the next topic. Uh, so the graduation cords at the end of the year are part of our end of year survey, uh, which we will be launching after Summit. Um, and what that is, it's really a way for us to get the information for your next leaders of the club. Um, so that's a way for us to keep track of what your club's planning for the next year and your leaders for next year. Um, as well as kind of get uh, like a whole big picture about what your club did the last year. Um, so we will be sending out this March, April, May, stay tuned. <laughs> um, and that's how you'll get your graduation cords. Um, and then in terms of leadership transition and retention, um, if you did not fill out the first registration survey, uh, you your club can't get graduation cords. Um, so I would say just double check that you're registered uh, and make sure that your club is getting like our emails. Um, if you got a back to school kit, we'll note that you're uh, registered. Uh, so I'd say just to make sure that you're staying on top of that. Yeah, and just remember um, how being registered helps you Uh, I think Juliet might have cut off, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and finish her thought for her. <laughs> I think Juliet was going to say, uh, if you are registered, that helps you stay up to date with our newsletters, um, with materials that we're sending out. So just things along those lines, just so we can have open lines of communication between us both um, and make sure that you're getting all the support you need for a successful year. And we do have another question. Um, how do we get our water walk kits. Uh, so the kits are actually automatically sent to the same address you provided for your back to school kit. Uh, so double check that you did get a back to school kit. Um, and they'll be sent at the end of this month with promotional materials like stickers, uh, posters, and we'll have everything you need to go ahead and host your own event. Any other questions? Okay, we do have another question. Uh, what topic should we hold meetings on? Uh, Anjali, do you have any ideas for that? Or do you have anything to share with your club? 
Yeah, sorry, my laptop just shut off for a second. Okay. okay. One resource that I love to use is on our UNICEF USA Club's website because it always has monthly topics that you can explore. And there's usually UNICEF related articles on the website that you can refer to when you're talking about them. Um, other than that, if there's an issue that specifically is important to you or affects you, you can talk about that. Um, it's often easier to speak from personal experience. Other than that, um, Omar, do you have any ideas? Uh, we have a really great PowerPoint Center on our resources page. Um, I honestly would say, if you have time over the next week or so, just like dedicate an hour going through the resources page because there's so many things for you to use um, for successful year that a lot of clubs aren't really using. Um, so I'd say definitely take the time to go ahead and look through that. Uh, there's a PowerPoint Center and then like a yearly calendar to look through on some topics you can talk about. Uh, so that'd be a great way to go ahead um, and figure out kind of what you guys want to do throughout the year. Um, and I think we're going to end on that note. Um, we just wanted to go ahead and share some important updates with you guys. Um, so summit registration is going to go ahead and be closing really soon. We're almost at capacity. Uh, so if you are interested, be sure to register like as soon as possible. Um, and if you have any questions at all, go ahead and join our Slack channel if you're not a part of it already. Um, so we are in the UNICEF club Slack channel, um, in the hashtag all clubs. Um, so we can go ahead and send a link um, for you guys to go ahead and join that. Um, I would say, if you have any questions, feel free to send them there. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We loved hearing all of your questions and um, knowing how passionate and involved you, you guys are. So have a good night. Thanks so much and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Have a good night.